T-minus 10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twin. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. We confirm ignition and the thrust is go. Apollo 11, this is Houston at one minute. Trajectory and guidance look good and the stage is good. Over. Apollo 11, Hatch. 35,000 feet per second. Coming velocity 35,570 feet per second. Altitude 177 nautical miles. 11 Houston, uh, the uh, uh, definition is uh, pretty good on our monitor here. The color is not too uh, varsity, at, le at least on this set. Uh, could you describe what you're uh, looking at, over? Roger, you're seeing Earth at uh, we see it. Uh, at our left hand window, it's a little more than a half Earth. Uh, we're looking at uh, the eastern. And the north half of the top half of the screen, uh, we can see uh, North America, Alaska, United States, Canada, Mexico, and Central America. Eleven well, Houston, we're really amazed at the quality of the picture up in the tunnel. It's uh, really superb, over. That is to turn your mirror right up in there. Roger, we're about to open our hatch now. Right. Buzz Aldrin reporting that he's halfway into the uh, LEM. And this view is inside the LEM cabin. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. I guess that's uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. We see you waving. Aldrin has apparently carried the camera into the limb with him, uh, showing us uh, Neil Armstrong and Mike Collins back in the CSM. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Over LOI, over. Okay, over LOI. Apollo 11, this is Houston. All your systems are looking good going around the corner. We'll see you on the other side, over. Right. Everything looks okay up here. Roger out. And we've had loss of signal as Apollo 11 goes behind the moon. Radio live clear, Houston, LA. Roger, reading you the same now. Uh, could you repeat your burn status report? We copied the uh, residuals of burn time, and that was about it. Send the whole thing again, please. It was right. It was right perfect. Sure. Delta tick zero, burn time 557. Uh, head values on the angle, DGX minus 0.1, DGY minus 0.1. BGZ plus 0.1, no trim, minus 6.8 on Delta BC. Fuel was uh, 38.8, box 39.0, plus 50 unbalanced. We ran an increase on the pug. Now 44 showed us in a 60.9 by 169.9. Roger, we copy your burn status report. So we're getting a beautiful picture in down here now, 11. Uh, the color is coming in quite clearly, and uh, 
we can see the horizon and the, the relative blackness of space. And uh, uh, without getting into the question of grays and browns, it looks, uh, at least on our monitor, uh, sort of a brownish gray. It appears to me as though uh, it made it different just sitting back in the uh, in the tunnel and gazing at all windows. It makes a difference which one you're looking out of. Uh, for example, uh, the camera right now is looking out the uh, uh, number five window, and uh, it definitely gives a rosier uh, or tanner uh, tinge, especially uh, when you look uh, straight to it and not. Uh, at an angle. Uh, Roger. Yeah, the crater that's in the center of the screen now is uh, Webb. Uh, we'd be looking straight down on it at about six minutes before power descent. It uh, has a relatively flat bottom uh, to the crater, and you can see maybe uh, two or three. Uh, craters that are in the bottom of it on the uh, western wall, the wall that's now nearest to, to the uh, camera or near the bottom of the screen, we can see uh, a dimple crater just on the outside. And then coming back towards the bottom of the screen and to the left, you can see uh, a series of uh, depressions. Uh, it's this type of uh, connected craters that uh, give us most uh, interest to uh, discover why they're in uh, the particular pattern that they're in. I'll zoom the camera in uh, and try and give you a little closer look at this. Roger, we're uh, observing the Dimple Crater now. Uh, the central peak we can see on the orbiter photos doesn't seem to stand out very well here. Well, they're not central peaks. They're uh, depressions in the center. Roger. Roger, Eagle, I've got Roger, how does it look? The Eagle has wings. Roger. Looking good. Roger, Neil, we got a, if you'll give us crew and data, we got the loads for you. Uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. Would be an honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you do. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations and with interest and a curiosity and, and with the vision for the future. An uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. Look forward to that very much, sir. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.